I'm Dr. Mike Dodds. I'm the director of CU Press here at Calvary University in Kansas City, Missouri. And I'm having a conversation today with Dr. Tommy Ice. This is part two that we began last week with the subject of eschatology, God's prophetic timetable and world events. Follow along now as we continue that discussion of what we're seeing around the world and is there any significance in light of God's prophetic timetable? I believe if people interpret the, the Bible in, in its context, literal interpretation is what I was talking about earlier and forgot, right, right. Uh, that, that simply means according to the letter. Literal means according to the letter, what is written, as opposed to allegorical, which means you bring in ideas from outside the context and mm -hmm. put them in, like here's the word Israel and you read the church in. Mm -hmm. See, that is allegorical or non-literal interpretation. Mm -hmm. And so literal doesn't mean literalistic, but it means according to what the text says in its context, as right. I know you know. But uh, No, it's probably to clarify, a figurative passage, uh, Jesus says, I am the gate. You know, yes. In John 10, well, the, the, he's using an image there. Yeah, but in the context, that passage is right. taken literally because that's what he intends. Right. He's using the illustration, yep. you know, of, He's the great shepherd and all of these other mm -hmm. types of uh, things. And in a literal interpretation would understand figures of speech and metaphors. Right. And that might be uh, one of the biggest issues for people as they look at prophetic scripture. What, right. what is the correct understanding of the passage hermeneutically, you know, yes. proper exegesis? Your book touches on Israel. People look at Israel today and say it's not faithful. Well, right, we, we look not. at it, we look at the nation, and it's though we have a new prime minister that wears the kippa a little bit more than the other. Uh, Israel is still a focus of God's heart, right? Because in our look, the purpose of the tribulation, the seventieth week, is going to lead at the end of Israel being converted. Hmm. So. If Israel, the nation of Israel, yes, I'll explain this. Yeah. In other words, if Israel as a nation is required, which it is for the second coming to occur, according to the mm -hmm. end of Matthew 23, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the condition for Christ to come and rescue the nation of Israel is that they have to believe and call on his name, and you mm -hmm. see that in Romans 11. He says, behold, I tell you a mystery. There is a new, a new revelation. And uh, so the point is, is that the tribulation is where God's going to purge out the rebel. We see this in Ezekiel 20, Ezekiel 22. And during that seven year period, two thirds, as Zechariah says, of Jewish people will be purged out. Mm. So that by the time you get to the end of the tribulation, and I think throughout the tribulation, uh, Jewish people will will start accepting Jesus as the mm -hmm. Messiah. And so by the time you get to the end, I believe every Jewish person who's left will have accepted Jesus as the Messiah, and they will call on him. He'll come, and the second coming is a rescue event mm -hmm. to rescue Israel. Otherwise, she would be wiped out, it says, you know, mm -hmm. because all the nations of the world gather at Armageddon and come to attack Israel. And I even believe uh, there are passages in Isaiah and other places that talk about now, from that point on, every Jewish person on into the millennium will be a believer. Hmm. God makes it up. It says the lean years uh, hmm. in the end. And so th this is being unfolded in history, we believe, in the near future, hmm. uh, very likely, because it's been 2,000 years. Yeah. I mean, come on. So, the, But they're not there yet. And no, they're not. The tension. So, uh, so in order to convert the nation, they have to be a nation for this to happen. Mm -hmm. So they're obviously being regathered in unbelief. Yeah, yeah. Paul's comment in Romans 11, then you feel, uh, if I understand your conclusion, that, that, that all Israel will be saved. There's that focal point on Israel coming in God's eye, or it's always been, but even more so in the tribulation period. It, is the world also a part of the focus in the tribulation? Then, well, of, or course, is it just of course it is. How so? Well, Revelation 3.10 says that you'll be kept from the hour, that hour which is about to come on the whole world to test 
those who dwell upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of the tribulation, another purpose is to test the earth dwellers. I have an article in Bibsac that shows the 11 uses of the phrase earth dweller mm -hmm. in the book of Revelation. And the first one there is Revelation 3.10, I just quoted. And <clears throat> then you have 10 other uses and you, you have pauses in the book of Revelation where it refers to the earth dwellers. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the last two uses, it says uh, that it talks about the judgment coming on the earth dwellers because their names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. They're not elect. Mm -hmm. And if you take those passages, not a single earth dweller ever becomes a believer mm -hmm. during the tribulation. So that is a term that describes the unbelievers. And so if the purpose is to test them, is God puts them through severe tests, extreme tests, and no matter what happens, he's demonstrating that an unbeliever is an unbeliever is an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it takes the grace of God for one to become a believer. Hmm. Uh, yeah, let's clarify what you're saying here. There are some that I've heard say no one is saved in the tribulation. Now, but you were just arguing that at least Jews are going to be saved. Are Gentiles? Now, I, we're, we're thinking of people that we know that they don't know Christ. And if Christ were to come back today, they'd be moving into the tribulation as unbelievers. Is right. there a potential for them to be saved? Well, well, certainly. In fact, Revelation 7, the second half of the chapter, talks about that. It says, Gentiles, you're talking about. Yes, yeah. it says, uh, it uses a term, a phrase, seven times in the book of Revelation, from every tribe, kindred, tongue, or nation. Mm -hmm. And that is a denomination that denotes the smallest people group. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be believers from all around the world it says a uh, a number too great to, to be counted. And that's talking about believers from the tribulation hmm. period. And those are Gentiles that, that's talking about because you have other descriptions talking about Jewish uh, converts during the uh, tribulation and stuff. So later it talks about a 200 million man army. Hmm. So I take it that a, a number too great is even more than over 200 million. So there's going to be hundreds of millions of Gentiles saved during the mm -hmm. tribulation after the rapture. And I've never bought this wrong interpretation from Second Thessalonians 2 that says if you heard the gospel uh, before the rapture and you rejected it, then you can't get saved. Mm -hmm. And that, that is, I've got two or three articles, you know, on my website rebutting that. The address that specifically. Yeah, it's talking about what they do is they assume that it's, it's unbelief during the church age mm. that impacts you during the tribulation. Well, sorry, but the, the context and the grammar and syntax of the passage is that it's during the tribulation that people have unbelief. Huh. It's not referring mm. to the church age, you see, but that's uh, especially in Baptist circles. I heard that a lot huh. uh, over the last yeah. 50 the, years. The impetus to evangelism now. Right, you better do part. it now. And I yeah. agree, today is the day you need to trust Christ now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't use misinterpretations of scripture to try to <laughs> motivate people never, to do that. Never, never. All right. You, you've got many articles and a lot of questions that we've engendered for me and, and others as they're perhaps listening in today. I've referenced this one book here. Well, on let, me, let me make one other point yeah. about that book. Uh, Case for Zionism. My lo overwhelmingly longest chapter is the last chapter. <clears throat> and it's a history of uh, <clears throat> what the church has believed about Israel. Hmm. And of course, the first 1500 years is pretty short because they're, they're uh, you know, anti-Semitism came in and there was a hatred for Israel and hmm. all of this. But the, the Reformation began to change things. And the Lutheran wing under Luther was bad, but, but basically uh, in the late 1500s, you begin to have a change. And for example, the, the United States, uh, the Puritans were very uh, much pro-Israel. Mm -hmm. And so America had a different type of Christianity than European Christianity with its uh, heritage of anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. And we, we produced filio-Semitism. And this is why even 
today, uh, America, most Americans are pro-Israel, mm -hmm. and whether they're Christians or not, because of that over overflow, and it's beginning to change. They've just done surveys with the uh, 18 to 25 year olds, and they're only 50 50, which is which is a huge shift uh, away from Israel. But and that's because you know we haven't had a revival. These people are not believers. Mm -hmm. You know they're getting into Antifa and all these crazy things. <laughs> You know, like that, instead of uh, being busy with the latest revival or evangelism project. Right. I, I also wonder, having been a, a pastor you know, mm -hmm. for years, that it's also the neglect of teaching it. Um, you know, for a number of reasons, people avoid prophetic themes, uh, partly the the pressure from the culture. Tell me how to live today, you know, type thing. But, uh, you know, we need to refresh our thinking. You've got many articles on the website. You've also got books at uh, pre-trib.org pre slash store is where they can find books. You've got some other books. I've got another representative here, Ed Heinson and Tommy Sice, charting the Bible chronologically. If you could recommend um, yours, maybe others books that you think are real good for somebody just starting at a basic level. What, help me to put the big picture together. Yeah, I, I would recommend a similar book to that one, but one that Tim LaHaye and I did 21 years All right, ago. So Tim LaHaye and Tommy Ice. Yeah. And what's the title? Uh, Charting the End Times. Charting the End Times is supposed to. And Dr. that Roger. has 50 charts and uh, chapters explaining the basics of Bible prophecy mm -hmm. in it. And, uh, you know, I'd recommend that. Okay. What about a mid-level? Somebody, yes, I already understand the basics. Uh, help me understand what might be next, but still at a basic. I don't, or I don't know, but I another one I'd recommend that's more extensive is Things to Come by Dwight Pentecost. Hmm. Okay. That's a very extensive. Now, that's a little older thing. book, yes. but yet you're saying his exegesis, well, yeah. and that's what we're I talking mean, about, Scripture. It, yeah, the, yeah, the interpretation of Scripture hasn't changed. Okay. You know, things. A book on a real deep level. Um, somebody really wants to. Well, go that's ahead. the one I would recommend. For, okay. I, I'm not sure about the intermediate uh, okay. thing. All right, all right. Uh, your books uh, would be available not only on your website, but where else? Amazon, Just anywhere, any, any place you know, good in, books in are sold. Those kind of places. Okay, that's yeah. you're distributing widely there. Um, how can our listeners contact you? They maybe have a question, or maybe. Somebody would want to call Tommy and say, hey, come on over and do a conference with us or join our conference. How well, the best you? thing is the email. Is, and could they do that through your website? Well, uh, probably. I'm not sure. I think my email's on there. The but, okay. uh, but it's simple. It's mm -hmm. simply Ice T, my last name. I C I C E and the letter T. T. I used to be a drink, but now I'm a rapper. <laughs> you know, iced tea. Yes. I at so. pre dash trib dot org. Iced tea at pre hyphen trib dot org. org. Cool. All right. So yeah. they can get a co contact with they you. They can email me. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And, there and, and get some information. Any final thoughts? You know, we've sort of ranged wide and I've asked some specific questions. Any words of encouragement for students of prophecy? Uh, something that you are, are just aware of that's going on out there? You either want to caution about or you want to encourage about? Well, the New Testament emphasizes as believers that we're, we're waiting for his son from heaven. Mm -hmm. And it says that six or seven, eight times, you know, and we're not watching because mm -hmm. there's nothing to watch for. All of those watch passages uh, relate to the tribulation, to people mm -hmm. in the tribulation as they see things developing. But the term waiting, even in Titus 2.13, where it says looking, that is actually the Greek word for waiting. Mm -hmm. And uh, some newer translations have updated that to waiting, which is what it should be, waiting for his son from heaven. And so there's nothing to look for in current events, mm -hmm. even though we see, uh, as we used the illustration earlier, uh, preparation for what's going to happen after mm -hmm. the rapture. And so obviously we're getting near. So what should we be about? Uh, we, we want to It get says to... we should be about yeah. evangelism and discipleship. Mm -hmm. It is talking about prophetic themes an appropriate evangelistic tool? Yes. I, I'm sort of talking, singing to the choir here, but yes. 
Well, yes. In fact, that often is a way to engage people is to talk about what's going on in the world. Are you finding unbelievers asking the questions or are you hearing people saying, wow, what's going wrong with the world? I, I, uh, I assume they are. But there was, you know, uh, it's been a year now since 911. Uh, there was initially, but I think that's fading even now. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the concern about nine one one, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, not nine one one, but the uh, COVID COVID thing, yeah, yes, yeah. in the last year, one of those and, pestilences type thing. Yeah, I mean, there, I mean, I think there was some initial interest spiritually mm -hmm. in things, but uh, you're still seeing an overall decline, mm -hmm. you know, in people. Uh, going to church and there's been a, a tremendous decline and all of that and stuff and i could go off for an hour and, and, um, and you said there's also a, a, a demonstrated decline in a younger generation's yes. interest in prophetic themes well in the in, in christianity period yeah. over and out yeah. you know right. they're just not interested right. Right. uh yeah you're right and the prophecy as well uh people always you know what can i do to get young people well when i was young in the in the seventies, prophecy conference was you'd have pro and it was all the young people. Yeah, yeah. Now prophecy conferences are all the old people. Hmm. You know. Hmm. Wow, uh, it, but it's we're even closer. Yes, uh, and and should be even more of a not a distraction. I, I'm using the word distraction that I spend all my time just trying to figure out prophetically where we are on the timeline or, right. well, there, or what details being fulfilled. And once again, you can't figure that yeah, out. Right, right, <laughs> right. I said, that's a distraction. That's but having saying. said that, I, probably my third or fourth time now, you know, yeah. Israel's back in the land. And that's got, and you know, you can build a scenario of what is going to happen during the tribulation. Mm -hmm. And you see the stage being set for that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, Tommy, we you just uh, don't know when the curtain's going to go up. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We we've filled a whole hour here. Or they say in the military when the balloon's going to go up. Right. Yeah. And, that and, and that's that means it, it's <laughs> yeah. the big one type yes. thing. Type thing. Well, thank you, Tommy, for joining us for this conversation, and thank our listeners for joining us for Calvary Conversations. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Calvary Conversations, a service of Calvary University in Kansas City, Missouri. We invite you to participate in the conversation by contacting us through the Calvary University website, calvary.edu, or by calling us at 816-322-0110. Join us again next week for another Calvary Conversation.